Before I put this machine back together and put it back in the uh, rack that it came from, I wanted to quickly make a video on it because I don't really see this chassis uh, shown on YouTube that much, if at all. Uh, what you're looking at now, this is a JVC HMDH40000U. Uh, what's special about this is, if I can, there we go, it is a D-Theater capable VCR. So, uh, D-Theater was a really interesting format. Uh, it was basically, not basically, it's HD video on a VHS cassette. Uh, more specifically, a DVHS cassette, a digital VHS. Uh, these were very sh uh, short run from like 02 to 04. They, have, they uh, made about 90, about 90 movies made on there. And this is just about one of my favorite formats ever. Uh, uh, the 30,000U, uh, which was the, the uh, flagship for the uh, format, was actually the first thing I ever fixed on a component level. So it's a very, uh, format's very dear to my heart. And this is one I got just this year uh, from a uh, good pal of mine who's really big into the format. Uh, he had this that he was, that he told me was in extremely rough shape and uh, he was selling it for cheap and I said yes definitely uh, so if you don't know anything about these this is still a VHS mechanism uh, this, this is a tape this is a run rate jury this is one of the harder to find tapes and uh, funny enough this was actually the first film I watched on the format so I felt that would be a good uh, one to use for testing now, here's the head drum. As you see, there are loads of video heads on there. Uh, not all of them are used for D-Theater playback. Uh, you still have VHS, uh, the heads for VHS playback, including the hi-fi heads. So those are still present. You can still play a VHS tape on here. Uh, these wires, uh, the little ribbon cable that's going into that green socket into the main board, that's where the VHS playback stuff goes to. And the one that's going into this board here, sorry, that's going to this board here, this is the digital preamp board. So that's where your DVHS and DTheater stuff goes through. And they're sent here to the digital board where all the magic happens. And uh, yeah on the back for the Dolby Digital and DTS and the PCM that the tapes have. Uh, you can send them out optically on this machine. This is a component uh, that can output the max 1080i that this format is capable of. And of course over here is the power supply. Now on these units, chances are they are going to need some recapping. Uh, these use the switching power supply and the caps, particularly in the DC outs. So like the small caps that just give the uh, final DC outs one last filtering. Those go, those are notorious for going bad on these. So those will definitely uh, going to need some replacing. Uh, so that's... And the mechanism might need, you know, a little regreasing. It still uses a loading belt on this unit that had to get changed. There's a capstan belt underneath. So that's, if anything's going to go wrong on these, that's basically what's going to go wrong. It's the caps in the power supply and the uh, mechanism. And of course the mechanism, you can use your typical VHS troubleshooting because again, it is just a VHS loading mechanism and all that. So, is there anything on screen? It's just kind of flickering that channel 2. Here's, now this is the remote for the 30,000U, but this, it also works on the 40,000. Uh, I'll pop in a tape to show you uh, how it looks. Now, of course, obviously there's some backlit issues because, you know, there's some ambient light coming in because it is like only 3 p.m. and my backlight currents aren't, aren't uh, fully drawn so 
mean, because you have to see what I'm doing, right? So popping in a tape, takes it in, head starts spinning, and it's just like going a VHS, except in HD. Now I'll go to the screen here. Now this, oh, you only got mid of the uh, intro. I don't want you to miss that. Now, as you can see, this for, this player is in extremely rough shape. And yeah, there's the uh, start indicator. As you see, there is rust almost everywhere. This thing was definitely stored near moisture. So the dropouts you see are going to be a result of, well, there's still probably some interference uh, that's affecting the uh, playback. This format is really sensitive and these machines are really sensitive to uh, like electrical interference. So that's an issue that you gotta worry about. There's the intro that's on all of these tapes. I believe it's on YouTube if you wanna see it. And it defaults to uh, Dolby Digital. I have my own little <laughs> uh, section for it on my receiver for the D Theater, because I spin, because it's a something that I want to dedicate its slot for. Uh, now this is only outputting 1080i to the receiver, but I'm having my receiver do the deinterlacing, because why not? So if I go to the info section of my TV, you'll see it's 1080, uh, 60 frames per second, uh, progressive. So 20th Century Fox, it was Universal, 20th Century Fox, DreamWorks, and Artisan that uh, released films on this format. Yeah, so far, it is also extremely t dependent on the tape, too, how many dropouts you're going to get. This tape is fortunately very, very clean. So no dropouts, but I'll put in another tape that does have some problems and you'll start to see the issues. So on this unit, it's probably not going to focus. Oh, you probably can't see it too. But there are two lights here. There are, this light at the bottom is to indicate that it's a DVHS tape. And can you hear me? And the top indicates that it's a D-theater tape. So it's really neat that they uh, have this. Now all these... Uh, have Dolby Digital and uh, PCM, two-channel PCM. On this unit, you can toggle using the audio, come on, audio monitor. You'll see, you'll have a choice of Dolby Digital and stereo. And you see that outputs a two-channel PCM signal and my receiver is uh, applying ProLogic to it. Uh, if you read the back of these, they say somewhere in the fine print that, uh, what were they say it? Uh, I'm, I'm kind of rushed reading. I'm not, I'm not focusing on any of the words, but they do have in the fine print on, on there that there is a, uh, the uh, PCM track is in ProLogic, so. If you're playing the PCM track, then you'll want to use ProLogic. So, what else? There's another thing that I can show you. Now, this is really weird, but come on, focus. So, this button six here. These tapes do have closed captions on them, even though they are HD. They still have closed captions, and the closed captioning internal decoding on these uh, on these players only work on the D-theater tapes. See? So that's really neat. All right, and I'll turn that off and cycle through all these caption options that they give you. But the D-theater tapes only use, you know, CC1. And of course, you got your typical fast forward. And you got your rewind. 
yeah, I'm only showing the intro of this movie because it's not really spoiling anything. All right. Last thing I can show you, I just remember this. There's something really neat on that this format does. These tapes do have chapters on them. This is the uh, interface for the 40,000U is way more uh, presentable than the 30,000U, which is an extremely basic uh, interface. This one is way more, you know, pretty to look at. So, yeah, and the uh, Fox titles have a lot of chapters. So you can scroll them down. Uh, as you see, they are num they are labeled, but uh, interestingly, the movie Love Actually was an extremely hard one to find. The chapters on that movie are just numbered, like it'll be one dot one, and then two dot two, and then so on. <laughs> that that's pretty funny. So, if I go to this, which I think is about where we are, and I hit OK on the remote. Was it gonna fast forward a little bit? Yeah, I I don't like to use the fast forward feature because obviously that's going to apply a lot of wear to both the heads and your tape. So I like so I just use it for demonstration purposes like this, and it was just so happened to be like very close. If I had gone to like the end of the movie, this thing would have zip lined all the way so that all the tape was on the uh, take up reel. So let me reset Dolby Digital. And then I'm just gonna pop this tape out and show you another one. Now let me just do this one handedly. All right. Now, something that this player doesn't advertise, but it's nevertheless really cool. Because you have your specs here. You got Adobe Digital and PCM. What this player can also do that makes it an extremely uh, valuable one to have. It can play back DTS. Yes. It doesn't say it, but it does play back DTS. This is Meet the Parents. This is one I got this year. Uh, the beginning of the tape is rather rough, so I'll also so that'll give you a good idea of how this handles dropouts and and all that. And okay, take two. The tape didn't bland properly, so some tape was like sticking out. It was really nerve wracking, but it was only the beginning of the tape, so nothing of value was lost. Yeah, so this tape, as you see, that's what the dropouts on this format looks like. And again, that's really dependent on the tape, and also um, your environment to an extent. With the if there's any inter if you're dealing with any interference, it might also improve if I unload and reload the tape because it did land really weirdly. There we go. Before this wasn't rotating, and there was the caps. The uh, capstan was still uh, moving the tape along. So, of course, that means it was just about to eat the tape. But I was able to rewind, and that reseated it. So, universal intro on in HD with dropouts galore. Yeah, this tape was a. Uh, must have gotten some playback back, some serious playback back in the day. And my receiver agrees. My 30,000U, this area also drops out. So, very, uh, so that kind of points at the tape being worn. Yeah, we're losing, we're not hearing Randy Newman's uh, great song. So, let me fast forward to a good spot on the tape.
hopefully uh, Universal and Fox are going to be forgiving for my uh, showing this footage, but I'm showing this for educational purposes. Not that they would care. So, as you see, it defaults to Dolby Digital. I'm going to hit the audio monitor button and see this stream. I go to it. And we got DTS. Nice. That is great to have. That is just about a must on this format. Uh, some movies uh, were released on this format and did not later make it onto uh, Blu-ray for whatever reason. Most famously, True Lies, which also has DTS. And that was the first tape I played back with DTS. And it was definitely very fulfilling to to do that it is also a power move to watch true lies on this format when there are people complaining about there not being a blu-ray <laughs> if i say so myself but yeah, as you see this part is playing nicely and the rest of this tape plays with way less dropouts than what you saw at the beginning so that's what i wanted to show yeah why well, i had this unit out to begin with is because I was testing I was playing testing stuff seeing uh, making sure it was still working right one of the tapes I put in that I was having a difficulty difficult time playing was the ninth gate and I guess there was something wrong with the very beginning of it because it did end up eating up that tape so I panicked and uh, took this apart gave it a really good cleaning as you see that capstan is definitely dirty and I was scrubbing that thing you know silly with isopropyl alcohol and I think I got as much dirt as I can conceivably uh, get off that thing but yeah and the ninth gate that the beginning part also didn't play well on the 30,000 years so it's another problem that indicates a tape issue if you got two uh, players not playing it right and one of them the 30,000 you has been super reliable since I've been uh, since it's been in my hand since I got it uh, fixed up it's been super reliable so I so if 30,000 U says it's not good then I trust it but that's about everything uh, I can think of to show you uh, if you want one of these units then uh, grab yourself a parts unit on eBay because chances are it just needs to be recapped and uh, at least the power supply needs to be recapped and mechanism may need a little cleaning but that's just about it something annoying on this unit in particular i forgot to mention this until now so on the 30,000 u the power supply is just one big block it just pops out well do the cables you know and put and it just kind of pops out this one uh it's split onto this part here and the main board so see those little caps in the right down there that's like the DC out portion of the uh, power supply. So, and again, those are the caps that are really going to uh, give you a bad time if they if they go bad because they're gonna not get rid of the noise on the DC line. And uh, if you have noise on the DC line on something like this, then it's going to, then you're gonna get wacky results. So, <laughs> so that means you gotta remove like everything in order to get at the main board to then replace the caps it is stupidly frustrating on this and also I had like a really hard time getting the uh, ribbon cable from the heads to the preamp the digital preamp board reattached that was because no matter how like no matter how much I put it in it just wasn't enough it was literally like a millimeter off but then one time I managed to do it and I didn't want to like mess with it again <laughs> oh and also this these units do have that like little head cleaner thing that can deteriorate over time as you see I got mine out it's there's just a little clip there that you can undo and just pull the little thing out and that's about it so Thank you for watching this. I just wanted to bring 
this machine to your attention. Uh, promote this format a little bit because it is a great format if you get into it. Uh, I have about uh, about like 70% of all the uh, official releases. It's crazy how much I've how far I've come in only four years of collecting this format. But so I can't recommend this format enough if you are into the old uh, gear. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you for watching.